going to be talking about some blackberries. Uh, if you saw my other video on blueberries, uh, this one, watch that one first because this one might mention some of blueberry conversations we had. Blackberries are a great crop. Blackberries are almost like weeds, okay? But they do need some stuff to take care of them. Uh, they do like a little shade, but not a lot of shade. That's why the blue blackberries you get inside the vines will be a little better. Now, there are two basic types of blackberries, bushes and climbers. Uh, both of them come in thorned and thornless. Now, the kind I get is thornless, and the variety we get is called Triple Crown. It's a really good blackberry. The berries are really big. They're really juicy. Now, they, you need a structure for them to grow on, okay? So you can do it as easy as put it on a back fence. Good to go. You can put a couple T-posts in with some wire running across. You're good to go. You can get real fancy and put some 4x4s in the ground and run wire between them, kind of like a inverted V, or no, actually a V shape, just a V shape, and let them grow up on that. That is perfectly acceptable too. Uh, you can use uh, tomato cages, you can use old fence you find, there's a lot of stuff you can do with blackberries. Now, blackberries, unlike blueberries, grow in almost every soil. They're like most other plants where they like lower than 7 pH, but they don't like it down to 5, like blueberries do, you know, 5 to 6 like blueberries. Uh, if your soil, like most people, is uh, 5.5, or I should say 6 to 7 like most is, you're good to go. Uh, if you want to make a raised bed, you can. I really wouldn't even waste the time, to be honest. Uh, blackberries propagate very well. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry for coughing on you guys. Blackberries get their fruit on the last year's vine growth. So, whatever grows this summer and this fall, whatever new vines, that's the fruit I will get on next year. I prune every fall, mid, late fall. Now this last year, didn't do much pruning. I got kind of caught behind the eight ball and stuff. So if you don't prune, it's not under the world, but I really, really would. It's easier all around. Um, I actually had a friend of ours who she came out. Uh, she comes out and picks some berries for us and uh, and everything. And she she picks some stuff and she actually pruned them for me if, about two, three months ago. So uh, she really helped me out there. But Late fall, you will know what to prune because after the fruit goes on and the green ones are growing, the ones that already had fruit on them will turn brown and almost look like they're dead. Just get a pair of pruners and what I do is I just go down the line and I just snip them all at the ground, all the brown ones. And then after I do a big row or whatever I do, uh, I go back and pick them all out. Now yours will be a lot easier because we got hundreds of plants. <laughs> we had a lot of blackberries. We are changing our blackberry setup just to make it easier on a larger scale, but on a home scale, almost any way you do it, you're fine. I would plant them about a foot and a half away from a fence if you're going to use that fence to, to train them on, and they will keep going. Now, when you propagate them, it's very easy to move them. All you have to do is, when you see a little shoot coming up out of the ground, dig that out. You can put it in a pot and let it grow, or you can go transplant it immediately as long as you see little roots on it. You're good to go. And you can keep propagating blackberries yourself. So we started with less than 30 plants. And right now we have over 300. And I know we've given away at least 100 to other friends, and they've given them away because they propagate very well. Like we said, it is like almost a weed. Uh, if what some people do is, and I've never done this, so I do not know if and how, is right after the berries are done producing, they get a mower and they just mow them all over. Then they just let the new shoots come up and they're good to go. Now, downside is if you're up north and you're in a colder environment, they might not get long enough for that year. Down here in Texas, we get a longer growing season, you might be able to get away with that. So... I would still do the hand pruning to cut out the, the old ones because you'll just get longer, better growth. And as years goes on, you'll see the stems get bigger and bigger and bigger. And some of them dang near stand up on their own. They're that thick. Now, bush variety, you don't have to do anything. 
you just plant them, they grow like a bush, and you're good to go. Now, in general, now there's always exceptions to the rules. There are more thornless in non-bush varieties. But there's always exceptions to that rule. You know, there is some out there, yes, 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 yes. But we just find it easier. We build our own structures, and we really like the triple crown because of the big, the juicy, and everything like that. Now, planting them, just plant them. Uh, water, normal water. Uh, they're unlike blueberries where you don't want to let them dry out. Blackberries can get dried out, but that's not really good for the plant. You want to keep a regular water schedule on when they're fruiting. Otherwise, they become really, you can see one here I have. Uh, this plant got a little dry. Uh, this, and this isn't even a big one. This is actually on the small side of normal. You can see here, this one, you can see just the beads did not get as big and juicy and ripe like that. Still good, still pick it. Now, watering blackberries, you do not water above the plant. You use a soaker hose or some type of drip. Do you see how these have all those little pockets there? If you water above ground a drop of water will land here, this pocket will now become hard and crispy. So you do not want to water above the plant when it's fruiting. Other times of year when there's no fruit, you're fine. But while they're fruiting, you want to use soaker or drip. That's all you want to use. It's really easy to put soaker hose down and turn it on for an hour or two, you know, once, twice a week, and you're good to go. Uh, soaker, hoke is, soaker hose, good and bad is it's dirt cheap, uh, easy to set up. You don't have to do much. The only thing, two things about soaker hose is they generally, if you get two seasons out of them, that's good. Uh, third season, you're going to start having issues. Bad thing about soaker hoses is you can only generally run one soaker hose on at a time. Most people, that's fine. But if you have a long, long row of it, you can only have one soaker hose on at a time because of the pressure or it just won't produce enough water out of it. So you're going to have to run it in different zones, run a hose down to the second line and stuff like that. So that's a downside, but it's easy. Drip, you set it up once, you're good to go all year long. It's more expensive and they're not hard to set up. And if you get the half inch drip and those little two gallon per hour poke, ones you poke in, it's easy to set up. Uh, I, when I set mine up, I set mine up where they're about a foot, and a foot off the ground. That way they're not on the ground. So when I weed eat next to the ground between the plants, I don't chew chew it up and have to keep replacing it so that's something that that's something else so blackberries are really easy now growth cycles of let me get this in order here here we go okay they'll start off like this and they will look like a raspberry that is actually a blackberry right here uh, we do get some people coming over that we don't know and they kind of go on their own. They pick one thinking it's a raspberry and eat it. And like an unripe blueberry, you will pucker up real good when you have that. Then it'll go like this where it'll be like half and half. They'll start ripening. Now, you will pick some like this because you're going to see the pl plant like this. And you're going to pick it off and you're going to go, oh, I keep these. We mix them. So we're good to go. Now, when I pick them, I pull lightly. If they're fully ripe, they come right off. If they have some red on them, they'll give a little tug and it'll be harder and I leave it. And then I'll look and I'll say, yeah, there's some red on it. Then you go to them uh, that are ripe. Uh, really good, ripe, good to go. I should show you this one. Really good, ripe, ready to eat. Just pop them in your mouth and you're good to go. Now, then you get to the overripe. Uh, overripe, you'll start to see them, the pockets start to die. Now, these are not hard, but that looks like the hard, that's, remember when I told you about the water gets on them and they get a little hard? Almost look like that. This is just overripe right there, and they're, it's starting to decay a little bit. I still pick these. They're still fine. They're still good to eat. Sometimes you'll see them like this because a bird will go on it right away. I still pick them. I don't sell them like this, but I keep them for me. So, and... That's, that's the different stages of the blackberries. Blackberries are a great plant, but blackberries you have to pick every day. They will go from 
they can. Now, this one day, this a second, this the third, and overripe the fourth. So they will go from nice to bad in one day. So if you're going out of town for two, three days and they're there, and like most fruit, when they start dying on the plant, that triggers the plant, okay, start slowing down production. Have somebody come pick. Even if they're not for you, have them come pick and say, hey, come pick my blackberries and show them which ones to pick and say, pick these two days and you will not have a problem finding somebody to come over. We don't. Uh, so when we're, we're not selling them right now, so that's, we don't have an issue at all getting people to come over to pick. Blackberries in the same way, you can go like this. You see, I see I got a couple, I know it's a little red on them and now and then. Just put them on a cookie sheet like this, pop them in the freezer overnight and we vacuum pack them. Uh, and then you're good to go. Uh, when you thaw them, like blueberries, they're not as good to eat fresh, obviously, but they're great in smoothies, recipes. Uh, my wife, every day for breakfast during the year, takes a couple blackberries, crushes them, mixes it with a little vanilla fat-free yogurt, puts a little uncooked rolled oats on top, and some uh, chopped almonds on top. When she's ready to eat, she just mixes it and goes. It's almost like a Swiss oatmeal type, and it's really good. She has that every day for breakfast, and she never complains. So we freeze them, and then we take them out and, and everything like that when we need to use them. So that's it about the blackberry plant. They're a great plant. If they, they are a little more labor-intensive than blueberries because you have to pick them every day. You, you, you have to, or you will just knowing you will lose some fruit and they won't produce as much so uh, you don't have to but generally you should so that's it about the blackberry plant i hope everybody enjoyed this video uh, any questions please leave them below um, if, if you want to see any uh, thing else about these let me know any questions and if i need to go in more in depth or something like this that's it i hope everybody has a great day